YouTube peoples, my name is Kylie and if you follow me, if you're subscribed for true crime content, this video is of a different, it's actually a full 180 because this video is about my skin and for once trying kind of like medical grade skincare treatments for acne and post-inflammatory arrhythmia or PIE is what they call it. So I've had acne since I was 12 so we are going on 11 years strong, sadly. I will show you guys what that looked like on the screen throughout the years. Um, I still, in the past like three to four years, I've still gotten like pimples, things like that constantly. Like, you know, if you have it, you wake up and it's there. Like at least one to five. So I used to have cystic acne that was super bad. Then I kind of like went into like whiteheads, pustules, still gross so really gross and like occasionally cysts so now as in like the past like year my acne's kind of subsided a little bit more not really not too much but i have a lot of pie i have a lot of those like irritating red marks on my skin that are almost more annoying than acne because with everything like time heals all wounds blah 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 i do not want to wait like my skin, my face was a different color from my neck. Like my face was red, my neck, the, like normal color. So right now, this is day one after getting microneedling done. It's not even been 24 hours yet. I got microneedling at 5 p.m. last night, specific, Pacific, specific, Pacific Standard Time. Don't know why you guys need to know my time zone, but hello from California. And this morning, I'm recording this at 9 a.m. So. Last night, I got my needling done. My skin was pretty flushed, pretty pink afterwards. You should not, okay? You should not walk out of there bloody and seeing all these like marks on your face. Like, I've seen a few of them, that's fine, but you should not walk out of there beat red and bloody because I've done a lot of research on where I got my needling done and where I got my BBLs done or the broadband, broadband light or halo laser. There's two different names for it, same thing. I did a lot of research on where I got it done and I have to say, that is the top thing I would recommend is make sure you trust the people who are putting a whole bunch of needles, like hundreds of needles into your face. Just trust them, you gotta trust them. Like kind of vet them out, be like, hey, what did your patients look like after they got this done? Just, yeah, cause you should not be walking out there like dripping in blood. That's not good. Like, even like some people I saw on TikTok had scratch marks because the people went at really weird angles and like scratched their skin with the needles. It just not good. It can, it can go not good really fast. So just make sure that the people you're getting it from, make sure that they're licensed, make sure that they've been doing it a while, make sure that their patients had results similar to like what you want, depending on your skincare concern. Cause of course, Everyone has different healing times, everyone has different skincare concerns. My specific ones were the acne and the PIE. So, honestly, I have not been happier with my skin. As you can see, I'm recording with a camera. Like, you guys can actually see what I look like. There's no filters, there's no kind of crappier iPhone camera. I wanted this video to be as raw and authentic as possible. Now first, before I got this one microneedling session, I had the four broadband light sessions. Those were really good too. I have to say, a little more painful to be honest. Like, you would think that a light wouldn't be as painful, but no, the light was more painful. And this is coming from someone who's had an emergency C-section and tattoos. So, for me to say like that was like the more painful one, I feel like you could trust that a little bit. I don't know. I want us to be friends. Sorry. Don't know why I was like choked, but I want us to be friends on this and be like super real with you guys because skincare, having like acne skin, having red skin, it can destroy your confidence. I wish I was one of those people who could be like, I have acne and I'm going to wear it proud, but like, no, I'd be talking to someone and in my head being like, gosh, my skin hurts. Are they staring at my acne? Can they tell I'm like wearing like piles and piles of makeup right now? Would it be better if I wasn't wearing makeup? Like all those little thoughts made it kind of so that way I could not live in the moment. I could not just like whip up my phone and take a selfie with someone. I was so insecure. 
my Instagram just recently started getting selfies. Yeah, go check that out by the way. But anyways, the four broadband light treatments. So essentially they sent like a pulsed light at different like frequencies into my face and that would kind of damage it below the surface. So when you're getting microneedling, like you can kind of see that they're damaging it, damaging it on the surface, causing those superficial wounds to trigger your natural collagen production to kind of give your face like that fuller appearance to fix any like damage that's already been done to it, etc. So they're kind of trying to do the same thing. The broadband light and the microneedling, they are trying to stimulate your collagen production. So I think that the broadband light did a pretty good job, but for, and I'll show all the things on the screen, befores, durings, afters, everything will be labeled as I'm sure you're seeing right now. But I have to say like, I wasn't super happy with like my results because I think like a week later I got an acne breakout again. The first two treatments, I broke out so much, which I know with so many acne treatments is like, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to make you purge. Purging is a good thing, but the first two times I got that treatment, oh my gosh, I broke out so bad after. Like it was, it was not fun. Also with both of these treatments, try to stay out of the sun or wear SPF, especially after microneedling because like you're actually damaging like the top, the surface layer of your skin. Wear SPF 15 at minimum every day following the microneedling because with both of these treatments to keep the results that you gain, you gotta like have your water intake all good. You've gotta be like sleeping well, like balancing your hormones. Like the results aren't going to stick within not like an unhealthy lifestyle. I'm not saying like cut out all junk food out of your life and like start going on runs, but you, you gotta maintain it. Like you can't just like throw a whole bunch of chemicals on your skin anymore. I don't know, just take care of it. Be nice to your skin, be nice to yourself, love yourself, give yourself a hug. Um, yeah, also with both these treatments for like two weeks after, do not get your face hot, like no saunas, no getting in like a boiling hot shower. Don't wash your face with scorching water, like ever, trust me, been there. Made that mistake a million times, but especially after these treatments, do not do it. Um, also like don't work out because working out can also make your face like hot and flush and you don't want that. So yeah, those are my tips so far from what I'm thinking. I wish this video was more cohesive. Hopefully you guys can keep up. It's hard because my vision's not the best. So I'm just staring at a blurry camera. I don't even know how it looks, what I'm saying. I can't even tell if I'm fully on the screen right now, but yeah. Um, super happy with the microneedling to be honest. Like I feel like my face is lifted and I know this is only morning one. This is day one of healing. Um, afterwards, oh, okay. During the microneedling, you can either, they'll probably give you an option of like putting your own plasma into your skin, like taking your blood, swirling it around. I, I did not do that option. They had like a tube of something else and I was like, let's just do that because I think it would have cost more and these are pricey treatments. Um, each treatment, I'll be completely transparent, was $500. So the four BBL sessions were like 2000, I believe, right? Yeah. And then the microneedling was another 500. So, so far in the past six months on my skin, I've spent 2,500, which that might sound like a really big number. And it is like, trust me, it, it didn't feel good swiping the card, did not feel good. It's not easy for me to do that yet, but here's why I'm going to say that it was worth it and I would do it all again. So since I was 12 and I started getting these acne breakouts and they're really bad and took a huge toll on my confidence, my dad would send me in to get facials from an esthetician. She's a really great esthetician, don't get me wrong. And she also like does like, you know, my brows and everything else. But the thing is, I believe that those facials were meant for like normal people's skin who like would occasionally have an acne breakout or who would occasionally have some rosacea, something like that. Like something where you just need a little minor fix. Like my skin needed a full 180. So my dad was getting me these facials for probably four years, once or twice a month, if I'm being honest. 
And then once I turned 16, I believe, once I turned 16, I started paying for them myself. So that was like 125 a month. And then on top of all of the many things for skincare I tried, like anything that I would see recommended on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, I would buy it. So I would probably spend around three to four grand annually per year on my skin for the past few years. So that is how I was able to justify it because I was like, this is the last hurrah. This is like medical grade stuff. I can't get this anywhere else. Like and the only difference is you're paying it all at once instead of in tiny increments. So of course you're going to be like, oh gosh, that's a lot. But break it up over the course of the year. Think about the results. The BBL, I think you should come back. What I was told is like once or twice a year to kind of get like a little refresh. And then with microneedling, it's kind of up to you. Some people need three or four sessions. Some people need like five to eight, depending on their skincare concern. Because I already had the broadband light treatments, I'm hoping that I just need the one microneedling and then I'm good. Because they wanted to give me a fifth broadband light treatment, but I wanted something a little more invasive. So that is why I chose to do microneedling for my fifth treatment. Um, yeah, I will show you, this is day one. Depending on like where your skin's at, everyone has flakiness usually. Here's my flakiness. It's like under, under my nose. It's on my chin. Yeah, honestly, I'm like, I'm beyond happy with it. Cause like, because of my acne and because I would pop, I mean, we should not pop, don't pop. Coming from someone who picked, popped, squeezed, and I'm blaming my mom for that because she used to do it to me. And she's the one who taught me that that was like an option. So I'm just gonna blame her a little bit. Even though I was repeatedly, repeatedly told no by many people following that. Um, yeah, uh, anyways, picking and popping also kind of made my skin sag. And you should not have saggy skin as a 21 year old. No. So getting microneedling, I have to say like lifted it. Like I feel lifted. My cheeks, they're like they're up here again which is where they should have been. So I'm very happy with it. Obviously I have a little bit of redness, especially on my nose and cheeks still, but in comparison to last night, like the fact that it's not been 24 hours and I feel like this healed, I'm very happy. Um, okay, also no harsh ingredients on your skin after, not for at least like a week or two, gentle cleanser, non-scented, all that good stuff, moisturizer. Some people use Aqua 4. I do not own aqua for at this current second. So I'm just doing my like SPF and I use like, it's like the Korean skincare brand SPF, like Skin Labs, Skin Lab, Bio Lab. It's like the one, the little white bottle with the girl on it and the, the blue mountains. I'll, I'll show it on the screen. But that, that sunscreen and I'm acne prone. So of course, I never wanted SPF. I only started wearing it this year, shame on me, but all the other SPFs would like irritate my skin. Like it'd make me break out, it'd burn, etc. Skincare should not burn. So I love this SPF. I hope, I hope if you have not found an SPF that you love yet, I would encourage you to try it. I have no incentive, not being paid to make this video. I just really like, I just want people to know that there's hope because I did not feel like there was any hope because people would find like La Roche, I don't know what the skincare is, and be like, this is the holy grail for acne, not for me. Like a lot of people's holy grail products were not holy grail to me. I've stuck with my like CeraVe gentle cleanser, foaming cleanser, it's not fancy, and like the face moisturizer because my skin does not like fancy smancy all these ingredients drying, peeling products, so. And I tried them, okay, don't get me wrong, I tried those for like a year time. I'd give each product about a year. So that, that's just my cup of tea on it. It's my personal experience. And if stuff works for you, that's cool, because everyone's skin is different. But my skin took really well to microneedling and the broadband light. Broadband light, it's very normal to, it's very normal to break out after the first two sessions. Even with microneedling, depending on your skin, you can break out along with like the flaking, the peeling, but I don't think I am as much because um, 
like I said, I already had the four broadband light treatments, so my skin was kind of like prepped. It's been through these procedures before, so yeah. Um, I hope that can help some people, because I want everyone to feel confident in their own skin, like literally. Because people will say like, oh, it's what on the inside that matters. And yes, it is what's on the inside that matters. Be a good person. But I will say having like confidence to be able to just like walk outside and not feel like you have to pile on makeup or hide from people. Just being able to like go through the Starbucks or not Starbucks, any other coffee shop drive through at the moment. That would, uh, with, with confidence, like without having to like hide your face from the barista, you can walk in a grocery store, like it's all great. Yeah, so I hope that this helped and that seeing like my skin up close and personal helped. Uh, yeah, and I will see you guys for true crime videos and maybe some more skin updates. So yeah, bye beautiful people.